Hello, Captain VFC here with another build analysis video, this time looking at the Airfix Bristol Beaufort in 1 72nd scale. Usually the kits I feature on the channel are quite small, such as single engine fighters, but sometimes I just want to tackle something a little larger, and I do have plenty of kits like this in my stash, and well, this one has been crying out to be made ever since I bought it in 2021. So I guess now the time has come. So join me as we take a little look. This is not going to be an in-depth every part and every part video. It will be a general analysis with some commentary. But unless you're new here, you know that already, don't you? Basic data on the kit then. This is a 2021 tooling. This was the only release of the kit until it was announced this year, 2024, that they are redoing it as a Mark 1A, so a different turret and minor tweaks. There are 159 parts according to the box, although only one of them constitutes a crew member, which for a four-man aircraft is perfectly logical, I'm sure, to someone. There are two decal schemes, and you can check the unboxing video, which I will link above if you haven't seen it already. And the recommended resale price is $23.99. However, this is currently available on the Airfix website in their spring sale at $21.59. So, on to the build. And I've never really had an issue with Airfix instructions of the last decade or so. They're pretty clear, pretty concise. Now, this is a larger, more complicated aircraft. There is uh, a lot of steps. There is? There are a lot of steps. There is a good grammar in this video. Uh, no, there are a lot of steps in these instructions, and it starts with drilling holes. If you're going to fit the torpedo, remember to drill these holes, as that is how the bracket that holds the torpedo is secured, although that is, of course, a much, much later step. Construction of the interior is very modular. It is based around the location of the wing spars, which you can see here there are clear ridges and guides to make sure you get those in the correct places. But you will have the pilot seat and everything in the nose connected to the front wing spar. There is a little section that, spoilers, you can't really see in between the two wing spars. And then there is the rear section where you've got this kind of raised floor or ridged floor on one side. It's where the turret goes and that is all connected behind the rear wing spar. Whilst it is all clearly marked out and there are ridges, it was still built, whilst still wet, it was built lining it up to one half of the fuselage as you see here. There is no harm in just taking that extra few seconds to make sure everything is square because the last thing you want is an interior that looks beautiful but doesn't fit inside the sodding plane. Don't ask me how I know. There are a couple of fragile bits to the interior, such as this seat right at the very front, which, again, you can't really see, but it's got a, a table that goes on it later on. And so it's kind of obscured, and it's just precariously put in, in, in a little groove. And then in the rear section, you have this little toilet, which I think makes it the first aircraft I've ever made a kit of that models the toilet. Uh, I know they've done it on a couple of 48th aircraft. I think the Blenheim has one as well, for example. But either way, you can see the little pooper there. If you look down the window, it is definitely visible. And it just adds, it, it adds something. Um, it, yes, I mean, it's interior detail. They were right to add it. The instructions then tell us to remove this lip, this kind of flare that extends just where the turret goes. Whilst it is not difficult to do so, it is just something to be aware of. I generally prefer kits to not tell me to sand bits down, especially not when they're a complicated shape. That wasn't just an extension in one dimension, it popped out the side of the fuselage uh, in sort of uh, and towards the tail at the same time. But either way, that was removed and it allows the bracket for the side machine gun to be put in. I had decided at this point to feature as many open things as I felt necessary because with a lot of detail in this plane, I kind of want to be able to see it. I want to be able to look through the hatches and go, go, yeah, that's a that's a nice interior there. Uh, rather than what I usually do, which is just kind of slap a bit of green paint on and, well, ignore it. Speaking of, we are slapping a bit of interior grey green on. On. I have previously said that I had no intention of ever airbrushing the inside of a plane because, well, it's not worth it. And here is the first time that I proved I am full of bullshit. No, in all seriousness, there is enough detail in here to justify spraying it, and it also helps with speed just for coverage. So it's not going for a particularly mottled effect or anything like that. It is just putting a load of green paint in and then picking out the bits in black and silver and whatever else, uh, as you see here. In advance of this bit, I was on the internet looking up 
which parts of Beaufort interiors were black and which parts were green, found a fantastic website based on a Commonwealth Beaufort and more or less replicated that. It's not that I don't trust the airfix instructions, it's just I like seeing it for myself rather than uh, relying just on instructions and more or less airfix were pretty much correct. This also became the first aircraft to have some dry brushing on the interior. Yes, I added a little bit of chrome in places where feet or asses or hands would be placed before giving everything the usual contrast paint from citadel basculus scanum balaskis um, 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 uh, snake butt gray which is just to give a little bit of shadow and a little bit of texture just to take the edge off of what was otherwise a very uh, monotone interior gray green and there are a few decals for the interior as well being cartograph they're fine uh, the only thing that i find annoying about decals like this is when they are placed on a raised surface. I'm like, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to use the decal or do you want me to paint over the raised surface? What's what's the option here? And uh, I used to always just dry brush over them and now I'm much lazier and I just put the decal on. But either way, it looks fine. It's okay. It's just uh, I don't like putting decals on very bumpy surfaces, especially not when they're that small. But hey, it worked out in the end and given that the interior is quite open and the canopy is quite uh, large and greenhousey then yes you can absolutely see that decal and this is the table that i mentioned earlier it kind of covers up all of the progress you made on that seat and i didn't stick it attached why did i not stick it before oh i stuck it on at this stage because there was nothing else for it to stick to so it missed out on the wash and i had to go over it with a, a separate bit at a later date but that bit in particular is not not overly visible uh, but still that is the fuselage that is the detail inside rather impressive in my opinion uh, very very happy with it you've also got this really good landing light detail that you see there where you then glue the two wing halves together and you've got the the base of the the landing light in there uh, which will of course have a clear part over it at a later date from here then the exterior of the plane can really begin to take shape including the horizontal tail surfaces and the rudder which are all glued in place and then the extremely satisfying experience of joining the main wing to the fuselage assembly over the wing spars because it as long as it's made properly of course it just slides in and kind of clicks in place when you get there and it just feels very very satisfying and is a big improvement on kits of the the olden days where you just end up with kind of a little tab that has to go into a tiny hole but no this is the way forward i notice airfix do it quite a lot on their larger aircraft it is it is a joy to build a plane like that it's just, I, I don't know what it is something just so satisfying about it with the wings and fuselage attached then it is the first steps of the undercarriage the reason why i say the first steps is there are essentially two bits to this the green bit and the silver bit and the green bit goes to pretty much the level of the um, engine nacelles and then from silver is there so I'm doing just a green bit and then the engines need to be stuck together before the nacelles can go on. I found this a little fiddly. There is a tab on one side and a, an indent on the other side. The pin has to go through both of those layers but the tab is not a square tab it's a rounded tab and so it didn't quite fit in the way that I expected it to. Uh, it took a lot longer than I'd care to admit to actually get these engines together, of course there being two of them, but by laying out the parts in a nice clear order and working through it methodically, I think I got away with it. Um, I, mean, I don't know, look at the end result. Uh, it also means I painted bits that I didn't need to paint because the instructions didn't make it 100% clear to me how they went. And of course these engines are at an angle, so you see the exhaust is on a different uh, level on either side so it's higher up on one side than the other i just had a mind block didn't notice that straight away and was wondering why it wouldn't fit it was like, but but the exhaust goes there because it's there on the other side and it's just just read the instructions properly just sometimes take a step back and read the instructions then we have the first indication of the specific version that I am doing, other than the thumbnail and the clip at the beginning of the video, obviously. But the flaps are different for schemes. For, sc for schemes, I put schemes with about three Fs in it. For schemes A and B, the other flaps having a straight trailing edge. Now, I absolutely hate masking, and this put me off for a while, and the plane sat around for a few days whilst I plucked up the courage to spend far too much of my evening 
uh, masking tiny bits of clear plastic and it's obviously a very extensive canopy as you can see here. Overall I think it went alright, it's the first time I've ever done this much masking and as long as the canopy is put in, or the clear parts, it's not just the canopy obviously, the nose is put in in the correct order, I think it fits together really really well. There are a couple of edges that are maybe not as straight as they could be, but with a toothpick that can easily be removed afterwards. And then for the little window here, I've got some masking fluid. I cannot remember the brand of masking fluid. I got it from an art shop many, many years ago, and I just found it and thought, yeah, sorry, it, that'll do. The canopy then mostly was brush painted in interior green. Because it's going to be so visible, I wanted to make sure that you see the green on the inside rather than the exterior colour. There are a few black sections, such as the windscreen, which you see I've deliberately painted around. The primer, spoilers, is going to be just black spray paint, and therefore it's going to cover that front windscreen. But for the main paints, I went for this Vallejo Model Air Fleet Air Arm Colours set, which uh, includes a lot of colours, as you see there, and also some very helpful guides at the back as to what you could kind of expect. So Dark Slate Grey, as instructed, is sprayed down. It's also the first time I've drawn out the masking in pencil, and the first time I've done a soft camo. So this was a, a, a kit of many firsts for me and hopefully uh, you'll agree that the results are good but anyway this uh, this paint set fantastic you don't need to mix it down with anything you don't need to thin it it was absolutely fine and I was trying a 0.3 needle for the first time it came with the airbrush but it had been on 0.5 I think is the default uh, and this was the first time I was really experimenting so with the slate grey down, the dark grey came out and was just free-handed in the remaining black spaces. Rather than go for coverage, because I'd set this with a smaller needle, I was going for a decent paint effect. I wanted a slightly mottled effect. I didn't pre-shade it. We'll get round to that to date. I still haven't really been bothered with pre-shading, but you never know. The The result of this, I hope you'll agree at the end, was uh, very, very positive and has given me confidence to know that if I wanted to experiment with pre-shading, I absolutely could get away with it. But um, for this, yes, it just went on beautifully. And as I was spraying it, I was just going, this, this is probably going to be the best kit I've ever made, right? I won't bore you with watching me spray black paint on black primer, but I did mask this. It was a hard camo from the top to the bottom. If that is not correct, fair enough. I was at this point really, really worried that I was going to ruin it, and I thought spraying black over the camo was the most likely way that I was going to. And then everything was blasted with some gloss varnish no finesse in this just uh, a, just covering to get it shiny in preparation for the decals decals which by the way are quite limited on this aircraft so another reason to buy it is it doesn't have loads of stencils and every bit of every wing every panel do not touch maybe touch occasionally touch if it's not a week on tuesday please keep off it just has registration and insignia and a couple of minor details so the actual decaling stage of this aircraft went very very smoothly and of course as is standard with airfix these days decals are provided by cartograph which means they are pretty good quality i say pretty good quality i'm not instantly able to think of anyone who has better decals than airfix but uh, yes a bit of microsole a bit of microset just to keep them down smooth over some of the panel lines and placement is pretty much exactly where the instructions say they should be so fantastic everything is then coated with matte varnish thinned with a bit of thinner because it is a brush based varnish rather than an airbrush ready varnish i did not give another coat of gloss and do loads of panel lining and extra weathering uh, i genuinely thought about it however as mentioned earlier i didn't want to push my luck this is already the best paint finish i've ever applied on an aircraft and maybe in the future i will look at that see it as normal and go right let's experiment let's do something else but right now I knew I was going to get a decent looking aircraft out of this and I didn't want to take that risk to add loads of extra weathering and it's also about personal preference and I, I like my aircraft to be not necessarily pristine not shiny gloss and toy like but I do like them to look smart and presentable. 
We are nearly there, but we still have the smaller points. So, for example, the turret was assembled, as was the torpedo. The turret was fairly simple, but the torpedo kind of has this, uh, is it a wooden um, fracture bracket? Like when you drop the plane, is it what the Americans had, like a, a box? Something like that, I assume, something to, to help the torpedo hit the water without breaking. Uh, that just seemed to glue onto a straight edge with no grooves, no uh, holes, nothing, which is a little strange for an airfix kit, but I mean, it worked, it was fine. And this is the bracket that I mentioned way at the beginning of the video that supports the uh, the torpedo. And then this thing, whatever it is, the cowling has a mixture of dark earth and silver. So it's a bronzed thing uh, in real life, I believe. Or is it copper? I've already forgotten what it is. It's the, the metal ring. So it's basically brown with a bit of metallic colour just to bring out that sheen. Um, this is a colour that can be more or less made to your own personal taste. If you wanted it really fresh off the factory, you'd make it more silver. And if you wanted it horrifically abused and hot, it would be very brown and very washed out. I think uh, that's the one area that I can improve on. This is probably the best that I've ever done those copper rings, but also uh could still be improved realistically i need to think of a, a better way of doing it but um hey I mean, it doesn't look bad but by all means well, i might actually go over it with some gloss varnish i haven't done it in this video but just thinking about it now I might go over it with some some gloss to try and bring out some of the, the the metallic sheen a little bit more i don't know anyway these um these undercarriage legs they have very interesting instructions where it sort of line up here and then press and click and so here's me trying to press and click it but um it's not it's not quite as satisfying as the wings on the wing spar, for example, but as you see here, nearly in, and then you give it a little push, and yeah, it fits, it's fine. I think you just drop a tiny bit of glue in and secure them. Proof that I do sometimes use the appropriate glue for clear parts. Clearfix was placed around the landing light and also the, um, you see the navigation lights on the wing. I've already glued those in at this clip, but Clearfix was used for those. No, I didn't use Clearfix for the main canopy and no, I will not learn my lesson. The torpedo is beautifully colourful with the red uh, fins, if you like, silver for most of the torpedo. And they've clearly just slapped a load of black paint over the bottom when they fitted it to this aircraft which means I spent plenty of time painting it and then you can't really see it because the only thing you actually see is black with the red sides but hey never mind it looks good and then the last few parts can be glued in such as this cover and the guns and things and we are ready to see the final product. This kit has been an absolute joy to build. I cannot find any fault with the kit itself. The instructions are quite comprehensive, but it clearly mentions what you've got to do. And yes, there is some jumping around. It would say for this bit, jump two step this on page, whatever, but it at least makes it clear. You know what you're doing, even if you have to take that extra time to just go and check the instructions, which let's face it, you should be doing anyway. In terms of the way that I've made it, it, the assembly was absolutely fine. I mean, it's probably more effort to mess this kit up than it is to get it looking good. But the paint finish is definitely the best. In fact, by a considerable margin, the best paint finish I've ever achieved on a kit. And it was actually very simple to do. I didn't have to put in too much effort to get this result. And this is one of those kits that has just inspired me to just do better. It sounds a bit stupid and a bit easy, doesn't it? Just do better. But I can put in extra effort, a little bit of extra effort and get significantly better results. And I have already, spoilers, bought a couple of kits that I intend to give the same sort of treatment as this. And in my head, this is now a turning point for the quality of model that I can get. I spent the first day or so just sort of picking, it was on my shelf, just picking it up every now and again going, wait, did I make this? It doesn't look like I made it. It looks too good for that. So, yeah, there we go. That's, I mean, if you disagree, by all means, put it in the comments below. If you think it looks like shit, then tell me. Just as long as it's an honest opinion and not just you trolling. Because if you're trolling, you must be one of my channel members like these people on screen. Yeah, I'm, I'm joking, they don't really troll me, but uh, I do very much appreciate them. Time to wrap this one up with a rating. So, the Airfix Bristol Beaufort Mark 1 in 170 seconds scale. I give a solid... You look sexy. <laughs> out of 10. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like if you liked it, the dislike if you disliked it or just want to troll me. 
the subscribe button if you haven't already and potentially become a channel member if you are feeling particularly generous and would like to see regular updates of what is on my desk before they hit YouTube. Also, don't forget to let me know if you like this sort of kit. Do you want me to build something bigger more frequently or are you fine so long as it's just me dropping bits of plastic on the floor? Anyway, once again, thank you very much for watching and hopefully I will see you again in another video.